All right, in this video, I want to talk about using the integral test for series. And the integral test says if you have a positive decreasing function, basically, um, when you look at a series, um, the series from 1 to infinity of a sub n, and we represent this series by the, uh, letting that equal f of n, it says this series converges if the improper integral converges. So, you know, dig in a book or whatever for a, a slightly more lengthy, lengthy explanation, but that's the basic idea. Okay, so the idea is um, we want to figure out if does this series converge or diverge. Well, you basically just turn it into an integral from whatever the uh, starting index is. That'll be your lower limit of integration to infinity. And I usually just replace my x or my n's with x's. And now it says it a couple things. Again, you can only use this if this is a positive decreasing function. Um, so we have to show that this is one positive, but that's pretty obvious. Um, for all x greater than or equal to one, um, x times e to the negative x squared. Well, x is positive. E to anything is positive. That's certainly going to be something that's greater than zero. So it's certainly positive. That condition is. Um, I don't think you really have to do much of anything to, to show that. Okay, so the second thing we have to show, though, is it's decreasing. Um, if you have a function like 1 over n, you can just start plugging in numbers, I think, 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, etc. And again, then I think you can get by with saying it's clearly decreasing. But here, you know, we have x e to the negative x squared. Um, you know, intuitively, maybe you can convince yourself it's decreasing, but the idea is to show something's decreasing. Again, you have to use the first derivative. So here's our function. We have to take the first derivative of this. We'll get f prime of x. So the derivative of x is 1. We'll leave the e to the negative x squared alone, plus leave the x alone. We'll get e to the negative x squared times negative 2x, because we have to take the derivative of the exponent when we take the derivative of e. So I'm going to factor out the e to the negative x squared. And it looks like we would be left with a 1. And then I think over here we would be left with a minus 2x squared. OK, so that's the first derivative. Whoops, sorry, I got a little cut off there for a second. I got involved in my math. Um, OK, so. Okay, so what we have to do now is find the critical numbers of this. So the critical numbers, okay, it's where the derivative equals 0, remember, or it's undefined. Well, there's no place where it's undefined. e to the negative x squared, again, is always positive, so there's simply no solutions to that part. Um, if we set the other part, 1 minus 2x squared equal to 0, we can add uh, 2. So we'll get 1 equals, excuse me, y to the 2x squared, divide, and uh, we'll get 1 half equals x squared, or if we take the square root, we'll get positive negative 1 over root 2. So those are going to be the critical numbers here. Again, I want to keep the derivative, but I'm going to keep it in factored form. Okay, so we're only going from 1 to infinity anyway. Well, um, this is going to be the number. We only need the positive part, so 1 over square root of 2. Or if you rationalize equivalently, we'll get square root of 2 over 2. Um, the square root of 2 is certainly smaller than 2, so this number is actually less than 2. So really all we need to do is take any number greater than 1 and plug it into our derivative to justify that this is decreasing. So you may want to look over first derivative stuff. Um, I've actually got some videos of that too. Um, to find out where a function's increasing and decreasing. If you plug in x equals 2, again, notice e to the negative x squared. That's always positive. On the part over here, we'll get 1 minus, what, 8. That's going to give us a negative number. So certainly it's negative over this interval, which means the function is decreasing. Whew. Okay, so the second, <coughs> excuse me, the second condition is also satisfied. Um, so we've now shown it's positive and decreasing, which means basically we're allowed to do the integral test on it. Um, so again, this is why I typically don't use the integral test, because it's pretty long if somebody really wants you to justify things all the way out. 
So I'm going to integrate the improper integral and then I'll just tag the limits back in there. So I'm going to do a u substitution here. I would let u equal negative x squared. The derivative of that will be negative 2x dx. So divide by negative 1 half, you get x dx. So when we go to rewrite our integral with our substitution, we'll get e to the u. And again, x dx is being replaced by the negative 1 half du. When you integrate negative uh, 1 half e to the u, you simply get negative 1 half e to the u, which again is negative x squared. And normally we would get plus c. <coughs> but if I rewrite my integral, remember when you have an integral from 1 to infinity, <coughs> you'll replace the upper limit of integration with a t and then turn that into the limit as t goes to infinity. This is how we have to calculate improper integrals. So it says really I'm going to calculate the limit as t goes to infinity of this thing, negative 1 half e to the negative x squared from 1 to infinity. <coughs> so these are long and hard. I mean it ties a bunch of things together for sure. That's why, again, I tried to avoid it. So this is going to be negative 1 half the limit as t goes to infinity. We'll get e to the, whoops, I plugged infinity in here and I need a t. Um, so pull the negative 1 half out. We'll get e to the negative t squared. Um, minus, when I plug in 1, I'll get e to the minus 1. So again, I'm just pulling the negative 1 half out front, plugging the t in, plugging the 1 in. Well, again, if this integral is convergent, that means it equals some finite number, then the, m the series also converges. Um, e to the negative first is just a constant, so I'm really not worried about that part. I'm just really kind of interested in now in what happens to the limit as t goes to infinity of e to the negative t squared. Because if that's a number, it'll all turn out to be a number, which means it's convergent. If this goes to infinity or negative infinity, well, who cares if you're subtracting away a finite number? It'll be infinite, and that means it diverges. Well, to calculate this limit, this is just the limit as t goes to infinity of 1 over e to the positive t squared. And you could even calculate this directly. I think this is sometimes more clear to people. Um, so I just move it to the bottom by making the exponent negative. As t goes to infinity, we're going to get e to a large number. Well, 1 over a big number is 0. So it says this improper integral, we've still got the negative 1 half out front. So we'll actually get positive 1 half e to the minus 1, or 1 over 2e. So it says the integral converges. And since we know now that the integral converges by everything that we've shown, we can justify that this series also converges. Don't make the mistake, though, and say that this series converges to 1 over 2e, the value that we found, because that's not correct at all. Okay, that's definitely not true. Um, but we can say if, it, if the improper integral is convergent, so also is the original series.